to make the coffee. And I'm so glad I can have coffee this morning. So today's flavor is raspberry chocolate. And I also added some of this chocolate raspberry cappuccino powder that I got when I was down in Amish country. So I just put some of it in this cute little jar that I got from Mark's. I got three of them. This was a couple weeks ago and they were really cheap but they're cute. So that's what I have in my coffee this morning. So yesterday was a really long day and when I got home I took several short naps while I was in my chair. I should have gotten up and done something, but I just, I was exhausted. I, who knew you could get that exhausted from sitting around and waiting? But anyway, I'm glad that one is over with. A couple more tests to go, and hopefully they can fix my stomach issues. I'm hoping it's not anything too catastrophic going on but you never know it's best to have it checked out I'm not a big fan of doctoring and medications and all that stuff but sometimes you just have to do it so what I like to do is I like to check out some natural um, remedies uh, too so I, I prefer to go that holistic path rather than just medication and medication and medication because uh, a lot of that stuff isn't good for you either. It may fix one issue, but then, you know, you end up with another issue from side effects of the medication. And just a disclaimer, don't do as I say, do... Do as you want to do and do your own research on anything medical and then make your own opinion on what it is you want to do or you feel like you have to do. So I added a little tiny uh, pinch of cinnamon to my coffee this morning too, so I've got a whole bunch of flavors going on in this cup. So, um... It's going to be a beautiful day today, 71 and sunny, but we might get a shower around 4, it said. So, anyway, the trees are looking beautiful out there. I have a couple of maple trees, one in my front yard and one in my backyard, that are absolutely gorgeous colors. So, if I remember, I'll show them to you. Those two trees that I took a picture of, or did a short video of yesterday, they were absolutely breathtaking. They were, they were, it looked like they were on fire. So to add to the mix, I'm going to add some hazelnut creamer because that's what I have out. And I want to get that used up. So I don't know, we'll see. Let's see how this concoction tastes. And of course, the cinnamon floats on top. If you want a cinnamon flavor in your coffee, you can always brew it with a cinnamon stick. That would work. Or you could um, get some cinnamon extract, and then you won't have little floaters on top of your coffee. But I don't mind. So cheers. bit more creamer. So I've been looking at YouTube videos um, with chocolate or with creamers that you can make. It's not that hard. It's just I don't always use up my creamer that quickly because I usually only have one cup, sometimes two. Let me try that again. Yeah, that's good. So I don't want the creamer to go bad, and one thing about the commercial creamers is they last forever. 
which I know they're not good for you, but they're so tasty. So, um, I still didn't take down my fountain. I'm dragging my feet, hoping the weather holds out, but I really need to get going on that. And, uh, it won't take me long, you know, only take me about 20 minutes at the most. But I've been kind of working on things here and there in the house. I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit. I need to keep to my plan of doing the garage. Now my one grandson, not the one who lives with me, he's my youngest grandson. I also have a younger, two younger granddaughters. Um, but anyway, my youngest grandson, he's trying to earn some money. He wants to buy a dirt bike, so he sent me this text uh, yesterday and wanted to know if he could come over and do some work. Well, <clears throat> he couldn't come over till 6, and then he had some delays going, so he would have come over at 8. <laughs> I was just too exhausted. I said, no, we'll do it a different day. So I have a helper um, volunteer and hopefully he can find some time to get actually get over here. But he's a real he likes to work. He helps his dad all the time and that's usually what he's doing. So but yeah, he's a worker. He likes to take things apart and put things together and he's he's very um mechanically inclined and he's he's very smart. So anyway, uh hopefully will get over here. He wanted to put together my kitchen island, which is still in the garage, and half the stuff in the garage needs to be put together. So that will clear out a big space in my garage at some point. So, all right. Anyway, no tests today. I get to stay home. Um, I don't know. I need to get over my mom's again, too. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Uh, I have to go out. Got another test going tomorrow. So, <laughs> oh boy, I don't know if I'm coming or going. Yeah, it amazes me how tiring it is when you're constantly running around. It's almost more tiring than doing physical work. At least I find that to be true. So, all right. Um, I will meet you over there at the budget book. Okay, here I am back at the budget book. Well, yesterday I didn't spend any money. I almost took myself out to lunch after my test, but then I thought, no, oh, you're going to have to give yourself a red X if you go out to lunch and you've got a lot of food at home that you can eat. So I didn't. I just went home and I had uh, my leftover pizza and a piece of uh, pumpkin cheesecake that I had brought back from Amish country. So, but I did have to pay $8 for parking, but I don't record that on, on this sheet. That goes under um, medical expenses because that's what I had to pay the parking for. So um, I'm doing pretty well with the discretionary spending um, this month. Here's where I went to Costco, and I bought a couple things, but that's okay. These others were Amazon purchases that uh, didn't come right away, but, you know, I don't mark down when they come. I mark down when I buy them. So I think I'm doing okay with the discretionary spending, um, but in the um, in the mail I did get a, a coupon for 15% off one entire purchase at Ollie's. So um, next time I need coffee and spices, I'll take that coupon with me and uh, use it for that. Um, and Ollie's always has some really great um, 
like books, cookbooks, and yeah, really cheap, really good price. So I always take a look at those. Not that I need any books, but you know, sometimes it's nice to have a nice book. Um, and they also have a lot of gardening stuff, which I don't need any more of right now. And I don't need any more Christmas things. So, um, I mean Christmas decor. But, um, you know, it's nice to look around and every once in a while you can find yourself a, a treat or something, whatever. Because, uh, you know, money is, in my opinion, you know, it's there to be enjoyed and not just hoarded away. If you like to save money and save every penny, that's fine. I have to kind of chuckle because every now and then I'll get a comment about, oh, you're spending money again, or blah, 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 you know, and it's like, yeah, I am. Like I said, I my goal isn't to die with, you know, a ton of money. It would be nice, you know, to pass some on to my kids, and if there's some left, of course, I will do that. But that's not my goal. My goal right now is just to enjoy life and to enjoy the money that I do have because it certainly isn't enough to, you know, set the world on fire. I'm not going to go on uh, big trips or world cruises. I don't drink once in a while a bottle of wine with my daughter. I'll share it with somebody or my daughter-in-law. Uh, we like to share a bottle of wine. Um, I don't smoke, you know, I don't have any real uh, ho hobbies that I need more things for. I, I've collected all that stuff already over the years. So, um, you know, other than repairs, which is where most of my money has been going lately, um, I plan on enjoying my money. So that's my, that's my philosophy. You know, you may not agree with me. And if, if a little something gives me pleasure, even if it's for a short while, and then I can pass it on to somebody else, then that's what I'm going to do. My main focus is saving a little, you know, for emergencies, which I do, save for Christmas, which I've been doing, um, so that that's not a stressful time of the year for me, and... Uh, you know, have enough money for the repairs and uh, the basic things and have enough money for good food, and I do. So um, that's how I do my finances and my budget. And uh, it's, it's not uh, my goal to, you know, save up a ton of money because um, you can't take it with you. So you might as well enjoy your little pleasures along the way. And like I said, it's not nothing is like a permanent fixture in the house uh, as far as, you know, decor and stuff goes. If I tired, tire of it, I can always pass it on to somebody else, even if that means donating it to um, a, a, a charity or whatever. You know, so... I don't know. If you guys feel the same way, leave me a comment below. And if you think differently and you think you should save every penny, then that's fine too. Let me know that too. And, uh, you know, I'm, I always say you do you and I'll do me. And that's what makes the world go round and that's what makes us happy. As long as you're not hurting anybody, um, why not live your best life? Okay, well, that's it for my budget book ch uh, chat for today. And uh, I have to sit here and ponder over my coffee to see which task I want to start or work on today. All right, I'll be back. Okay, here I sit pondering what I want to do today. thought I'd have some coffee with you first. Cheers. always have to check my coffee, make sure no little fruit fly fe uh, flew in there. Everybody's saying how bad the fruit flies are this year. Um, they're like everywhere. Must have been a good year for them to procreate. 
Well, today I was sitting here thinking about my stash and do I have everything that I need and some other things that I could potentially use. Now I have, uh, I would say, 95% of the stuff, but I'm going to tell you uh, what I have and maybe suggest what you might want to pick up. Uh, of course, you can um, mix and match and decide what you like, what you don't like, but I, I think we're going to we're going to need it, you know, uh, especially with this election cycle. Uh, you never know what's going to happen depending on who gets in office. So anyway, that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about survival foods if you need to and you can't get to the store. And it's not just for that. It's also because winter is coming here. And um, I want to make sure I have what I need and what I want. So let me go over the list and um, you can check it if you want. Um, you can take notes um, and see what, what it is you think that maybe you need to stock up on. Now you don't always need, you know, a whole year's supply. But at least have some of the food on your shelf. And some of these things you can pick up for pretty cheap. Uh, none of these things are real expensive. But it could mean the difference between going hungry and having enough food to eat for you and your family. So instant potatoes is a good thing to have, whether that's the shredded, dehydrated hash browns that you can redo you can add those to soups you can have them for breakfast dinner whatever and also the um, mashed potatoes so Idahoan makes really tasty mashed potatoes now I make mine with milk instead of just water but you can definitely make them with just water no problem uh, peanut butter <clears throat> for protein the mashed potatoes would be for carbs, and you need carbs uh, for energy. So uh, don't be afraid to pick up instant potatoes. Uh, peanut butter for protein. Also, I would suggest having some uh, nuts on hand. I just picked up these peanuts back here, actually for my daughter. She wants to make um, peanut butter, so I picked those up for her. And But <clears throat> if you're going to store nuts long term, I would suggest freezing them because they do have oil in it that will go rancid if you don't. At least refrigerate it if you don't have freezer space. Honey. Honey can be used for a lot of things as a sweetener. It lasts forever. It's antibacterial. You can put it on wounds. You know, it, it has a lot of uses. You can mix it with uh, garlic and make a, uh, not really an antibiotic, but, um, well, it, medicinal. You can make something medicinal out of it. You can uh, mix it with apple cider vinegar, and it's good for your health. So honey, uh, rice, get yourself a big bag of rice or pick up rice every time you go to the Dollar Tree and put it in a small bucket so you have that available. Now, uh, my mom always taught me that if you're going to store something like that, to put a piece of wood in with it and you won't get bugs. Now, I'm talking about a clean, uh, with no, um, not preservatives, but, you know, just a clean piece of like a little block of wood in with your rice and also bay leaves. That'll keep it keep the bugs out. So uh, rice is very important. It's a big staple all over the world. Again, it's, you know, carbs. And cooking one cup of rice will yield you three cups of food. So rice. Now white rice stores the longest. The brown rice doesn't store as well because it has oil in it too that goes rancid. So the suggestion is white rice. 
vinegar. You can use it as a disinfectant, as a preservative, um, whether it's regular plain old vinegar, apple cider vinegar. It's, it's a good idea to have both because apple cider vinegar also has some medicinal per, uh, properties. So you can, you can use those. Uh, dry yeast, and that too, I would suggest if you're going to keep it for a while to freeze it or keep it in the fridge. But, uh, you know, you're going to want some something hearty to eat. You can make bread, all sorts of things out of it. So dry yeast. Uh, canned fruit for vitamin C because you don't want to end up with, is it scurvy or one of those diseases? You don't want to end up with that and you'll need some vitamin C. And it doesn't matter what canned fruit you get. I like getting like a fruit cocktail uh, in natural syrup. And uh, that way I have a variety of fruits. Uh, bouillon cubes, whether it's uh, beef, chicken, veggie, uh, beef or chicken flavored for uh, those of you that don't eat meat or those of us, um, because you can stick them in rice and pasta, even in your mashed potatoes for flavor, because you're not going to want to eat bland food all the time because uh, it's not very palatable. So, bouillon. Um, Grits, they cook quickly. Now, not all of you like grits, but they cook quickly, which is good in a grid-down situation. You don't want to be cooking beans that you have to cook for hours. Um, so that's something that you can cook very quickly in just some hot water. And uh, it's a lot of carbs, again, for energy, because you're going to need energy. Coconut oil, organic, unrefined, un, uh, uh, you can use that for all kinds of things. It's a fat, of course, and it lasts a long time. Um, you can use it on your skin as a moisturizer. You can cook with it. In a pinch, you can burn it, you know, stick a wick in it and burn it as a candle. And it does have a long shelf life. Um, powdered eggs for protein. Um, you can use that for eating. Make yourself some sc scrambled eggs. You can add things to it to make it more palatable. Add your spices, whatever. Um, so powdered eggs is a good thing to have. You can use it for baking. Um, and you probably won't even know the difference whether you use powder egg or regular egg. So uh, powdered eggs. Powdered cheese, that's always a good thing to have on hand, just for flavor. Uh, it adds a little bit of protein, uh, calories, it'll add the calories you need, because you need a certain amount of calories, uh, especially in a grid-down situation, it's not a time to go on a diet. Let's put it that way. So powdered cheese, you'll be glad you have it. Uh, instant coffee. You want to have increased energy, uh, so have enough instant coffee. That way all you need to do is add hot water and you're good to go. Um, rolled oats, you can use that for a lot of things. You can make a flour out of it. You can use it for baking. You can use it for a high energy breakfast. Um, you can make bars out of it with the honey and the nuts. Um, <clears throat> You can make a granola out of it, again, with the honey and the nuts. So uh, rolled oats is a good thing to have in your arsenal of foods. Um, now canned meats, uh, that's something I don't have because I have other things for my protein. I have things like soy curls and um, TVP, textured vegetable protein products. Um, I have in my freezer, I have tofu, I have, um, oh, what else do I have? I, I have a lot of vegetarian proteins that I can rely on, but for those of you that eat meat, I'd suggest getting canned meats, whether that's spam or canned fish. Uh, those little Vienna sausages are, are good to have on hand. 
um, check it out and see. You know, they have canned beef, canned chicken, canned tuna. Uh, so have enough protein so that, you know, you need that for your muscles. And um, so that's a good thing to have. Uh, lentils. Lentils are very nutritious. They're nutrient dense. Um, and they're fast cooking. So you don't have to, as opposed to beans, you don't have to cook those for long periods of time. They're good in the soups. You can make a lentil meatloaf, lentil meatballs. So there's tons of recipes. Um, and you might want to think about gathering up some uh, recipes online before, um, you know, things go bad and you can't use the internet and print those out or write them out, whatever, you know, you want to do, but have a nice stash of recipes that you can use all your um, stuff on. Uh, of course, pasta, again, for carbs. Um, I like to stock, I mean, I have different varieties of pasta, but my favorite is the elbow pasta. So I like to stock up on mostly that, but any kind of pasta, whether, you know, it's ramen, uh, that's a good thing to have because they're kind of instant. All you need is hot water. Um, they have the flavor packets, so stock up on ramen. They're cheap, um, and uh, they'll, they'll keep you full. You can add, you know, veggies to it, whatever. You can add an egg for extra protein. Any veggies you have laying around, if you have, you know, uh, dehydrated uh, vegetables like cabbage or uh, carrots or anything, you can add that to the ramen and rehydrate it. Just cover it up and let it sit for a while with hot water and you're good to go. Uh, canned veggies, you need that for vitamins and minerals. Um, which is very important. So I know you'll probably have veggies frozen too, but you could even uh, dehydrate your frozen veggies. If you have too many in your freezer, you can stick them in your dehydrator and um, keep them for longer term and uh, use them down the road if you need to. You can also can your frozen veggies if you so desire. Um, and get a nice variety. I like to get the mixed veggies. I like, you know, a, a little bit of everything. So uh, keeping six to a dozen cans of veggies and fruits available, uh, that's a good amount. You can mix and match. You don't have to eat the whole can at once. You can add it to different meals. You can stretch it into a couple meals, one can, whatever, depending on how many people you have to feed. Uh, salt. You've got to make sure you have salt and pepper. Uh, salt you can use for flavor, of course. You can use it to preserve food. Um, you can make a saline solution out of salt because that's what saline is, is salt water, basically. So uh, salt, uh, have plenty of that on hand. Um, just a few more things. Powdered milk, whether that's powdered regular whole milk, um, you can get powdered coconut milk, uh, powdered soy milk, whatever kind of milk you drink. You can make a lot of things out of the milk. The powdered milk, you can make yogurt, you can make a coffee creamer, uh, put it in your oatmeal, um, just all kinds of things like that. Um, you can get ghee, which is actually uh, a butter product where all the um, solids have been removed and it's basically just the oil that's fairly shelf stable and it'll add a lot of good flavor to your pasta, your rice. Um, I still have to stock up on some of that, but ghee is a good choice for storing. Um, cornmeal. You can, uh, of course, bake with it, make cornbread. Uh, you can um, put it on the bottom of your breads and pizzas when you're baking them. 
Um, so you can make tortillas, corn tortillas out of it. You can make corn chips out of it. So having some cornmeal in your stash is a good thing. Uh, canned beans. Now whether you buy dry beans and can them yourself. I think it was Homestead Tessie that had a good recipe somewhere. You'd have to search her archives on how she cans her beans, her dry beans, and uh, that way they'll already be cooked because unless you have a fire out there that you're going to be able to cook beans for an hour or so, um, you know, it, regular beans are kind of hard to cook. So you can mix those with rice and make yourself a, a complete protein. So protein is very important, so you can do that. Um, crackers, having crackers on hand if you don't have bread. You know, you can um, do all kinds of things with crackers. You can eat them plain. You can put your peanut butter on there. And I would suggest, too, that you get yourself some powdered peanut butter. Uh, you can buy that and just mix that with water. So that's always a, a good thing to have besides just your basic peanut butter would be um, some dry peanut butter. You can bake with it. Um, again, you can mix it with honey, um, put it on your crackers, and so crackers is a good thing to have on hand. And just two more things, of course, flour. You can do a ton of things with flour, and again, you're going to have the yeast, so you can make bread really cheap. Um, <clears throat> hopefully you have uh, some means of baking your bread. Now I have um, a pizza oven that I bought that runs on propane, so I would be able to bake bread in there. And also you can bake bread on a stove top, whether it's a cooktop or whatever you have in your stash. You can make bread in a cast iron skillet, and um, it doesn't have to be a baked bread, you can make bread in a skillet. And spices. You get yourself a lot of spices because um, in, in a situation where you're using a lot of stored foods, you're going to want to add a lot of flavor to your food to make it more palatable, especially if it's something that you're going to be using over and over. Changing up the flavors in whatever you're making, I think, is important. So there's my list of things to have in your stash. And as you see, none of them are really that expensive. A lot of these things you can pick up at Dollar Tree for very cheap or at Walmart. Some things are cheaper at Walmart. Um, you have to do a little searching around. So every week, if you don't have a stash already, every week buy a few extra things. Take $10 and, you know, buy some extra cans of veggies or buy a bag of flour or two, you know, whatever it is. So, all right, well, it's going to be kind of a longer video today. Um, so um, I just wanted to talk about some of these things and uh, leave a comment below if there's things that I forgot that you think might be a really good thing to have in your stash. Um, because, you know, uh, I know a lot of you, you read each other's comments, which is great. And uh, we can share uh, ideas uh, because, you know, we all think of different things that might be a good thing to have. So, okay, well... I don't have a whole lot else to talk about today, um, so I guess I'm going to call that good for today's video, and hopefully you got some ideas, some benefits out of it, and uh, please share your ideas, because we all like to interact in this community. So, all right, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. It helps my channel grow. Don't forget to share, and thanks for watching.